Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in for my long overdue junior recital. Um, my apologies that this has to be in an entirely online format, but hopefully that makes this more, accept, uh, more accessible for a few people who may not have been able to tune in to a live recital. The first piece you just heard was Hungarian uh, clarinetist and composer Bela Kovács' homage a Manuel de Falla. Uh, this is a very famous and popular piece, especially in the last decade in the clarinet community and is often used as an encore piece, but I feel the energy at the beginning inspired by the Spanish Impressionist um, works great as an opener as well. The second piece I'll be playing for you today is Heinrich Sudermeister's Capriccio for solo clarinet. Similar to the first piece on tonight's program, the, the Sudermeister Capriccio is all about moment-to-moment -moment contrast. High versus low, legato versus staccato, very loud versus impossibly soft. You'll hear a variety of themes in this piece that repeatedly argue with each other before converging to a surprising ending. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
The third piece on tonight's program, a little bit different than the first two, rather than being based on moment-to-moment -moment contrast, this whole piece is a large crescendo of energy. Um, all of my clarinetist friends are, probably know this piece like the back of their hand by now. Um, this is Stravinsky's Three Pieces for Clarinet. For those of you who are unfamiliar, the first movement is quite slow and plodding, but very soft and relaxed. The second movement starts to unleash into something a bit more wild, often compared to a bird or another animal. Um, and the third movement is highly angular and metrically unstable, but metronomically steady. Um, and Stravinsky specifies for the performer at the top of this piece that all of his markings must be very strictly adhered to. But this still leaves room on the, ha on the part of the, uh, of the performer and the listener to uh, figure out their own interpretation. So I invite you to figure out what, what, the, what kind of animal the, the second movement is or, or if it's something else entirely. Come up with your own interpretation. I hope you enjoy.
you enjoyed it. The final movement, or the final piece in this recital is not actually written for clarinet or bass clarinet at all. Rather, it's written for the cello. Um, although scholars originally thought the Bach cello suites might have been meant for didactic purposes, etudes of sort, um, in the 1900s they started to gain, per, uh, gain popularity as performance pieces, and in more recent history, other instruments, other instrumentalists, including bass clarinetists, have loved to borrow uh, this beautiful repertoire. The second Bach cello suite plays particularly well on the bass clarinet due to uh, the range and the relative lacking of double stops, especially in the four movements that I have selected to play tonight, in order of the prelude, the allemand, the sarabande, and the courant. I know these are slightly out of order, and I'm not playing the whole movement, and I'm not playing it on cello, so my apologies to any purists who might find this a bit sacrilegious, um, but I hope there's still something in the performance for you to enjoy. Thank you.
my junior recital. I want to say a big thank you for thank you for watching, um, and a special thank you to all of my teachers that I've had while I've been at UCLA. I know I still have more time left, but you can never thank your teachers enough. Um, so huge thank you to Gary Gray, Steve Barta, Boris Alkverdian, and especially Josh Rands for all of the past three years of amazing lessons. I, I don't think any of this music would have been performance ready with without all of your all of your help and mentorship. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching and I hope to get to play with you and for you in person sometime soon.